Brett Rasmussen here, just got my new sled uh, all wrapped up, uh, pretty stoked to get on it for the winter time. At this point, I need to go through and do some preseason uh, maintenance. I'm gonna start by checking the uh, clutches and belt. Remove the side panel and pop the clutch cover off. So uh, when I pull the cover off, I always just stick the clip on there so that it doesn't get lost um, while I'm doing the other things. Uh, then I need to pull this uh, uh, tool. It's a clutch sheave spreading tool and it's, uh, it just threads into this hole in this adjuster nut. After they're spread so far, I can just peel the belt off, get it out of the top pulley, and remove it from the bottom pulley. And it's sometimes a little cumbersome because there's not a lot of room in there, but once I get it out, uh, this is a new, new sled, new belt. Just gonna do a quick inspection. Uh, all looks good. If it was a used belt, I'd want to inspect for narrow spots and wear spots and so on and so forth. I like to use this S1 clutch and pulley uh, face cleaner from uh, Skidoo. It's an X XPS product. It uh, removes all the oil. Now, this doesn't have any belt residue on it uh, because it's a new sled, but what it does have is some oil uh, that's left over from the manufacturing process. And I want to get all the oil removed so that the, on my first ride, I don't... Uh, have any belt slippage problems and ruin a good belt. And I'll just rotate that clutch and get all the way around it. Clean both, uh, clean both clutches really good. And then I'll take a look at the belt. Uh, this being a new belt, it's not gonna have any uh, residue on it from uh, from wear, but what it does have is some mold release residue on the cogs and stuff. And so I'm gonna clean that just really, really thoroughly and get that mold release stuff off it. And what that does is it'll keep it from slipping. Uh, it's also really easy to just put it in the kitchen sink and uh, well, it's a little bit of dishwashing soap and that'll remove uh, any mold release material as well. Okay, now when we reinstall it, we want to pay special attention to the directional arrows on the belt. And as long as you put the, every time you have the belt off and you install it in the same direction, you'll get substantially more belt life out of it. Go ahead and install the belt on the lower pulley and then pull it up and uh, spiral it into the top pulley just like that. Now you can see it's down low in the pulley. So we'll go ahead and, and pull our uh, spreader tool out. So that aside, now we need to work the belt to the top of the pulley. As we do that, the sheaves will automatically uh, close up. And what we're looking for here is we want to see this uh, cog, the, the deepest groove in the cog, uh, flush with the top of the pulley. As long as that, th this is the preliminary adjustment, and generally we're pretty good when we reach, reach that point. Um, and so there's a couple of things that we need to be aware of when you, when you start the sled when it's idling. You wanna make sure that the belt's not squeaking and it's not trying to crawl or, or, or move by itself. If that's the case, that means the belt's adjusted too tight. The other potential problem is, is when you go to, uh, when you push the reverse button, uh, if it, if the machine stalls out rather than shifting into reverse, that's another indication that your belt's too tight. Uh, too tight of a belt is generally when this uh, cog is above the circumference of the uh, pulley. 
The way that I like to test my belt deflection is uh, if I reach in so that I have a portion of the front belt and the rear belt, and if I pull it in so it's straighter, you can see how the belt will actually ride higher on the pulley. And what it does when I pull this together is it makes the belt loose, and so I can easily spin it on the pulley. Uh, this tells me that uh, it's, it's loose enough and I'm not gonna have any creep when the engine is idling uh, and or I will probably won't have any uh, reverse shifting problems or stall out on, on reverse. But potentially, uh, what I don't know is that I could be not engaging in my lowest gear uh, and so if my belt's too long, I'll be, the, when the pulley squeezes the belt, I'm going to be starting in a higher gear. Uh, and I'll just say second or third gear rather than first gear. Uh, and I, I, I want to take advantage of that low gear. So uh, if, if it's really easy to rotate like that, uh, I, I can go ahead and adjust that out. So the first thing I need is my uh, tool to loosen the lock nut on this adjuster. And I'll grab my, actually my spring adjuster tool off the clutch cover, pretty handy. Now, this nut has got left-handed threads on it. And so what I want to do here is I want to squeeze the pulleys together to bring the belt a little higher on the pulley. And to, in order to do that, I need to turn the nut clockwise. What that does is it backs the nut off and I can feel it getting looser. And so I, d I went about a quarter of a turn there. Now what I'll do is uh, bring the belt back out to the top of the pulley. And it's important that you make sure that you get it all the way out. And I can still, if you notice, I can still rotate the belt without turning the pulley. I've got uh, quite a bit of belt above the pulley and it's fairly tight right there. I think I want a little more looseness in it. So I'll just rotate this the opposite direction, tighten it up just a skosh. And now I can turn the belt a little easier. And you can see that it's not riding quite as high in the sheave. And uh, what I'll do now is I'll lock this down and go ahead and test it by starting it checking for creep and or squeak at idle and make sure that it shifts easily in and out of reverse. The brake lever pivot is something that's often overlooked and what can happen with that is snow will melt and run in there and turn to ice and then uh, when, you, when you pull on the lever, the lever won't fully release and it'll it'll keep a little bit of pressure on the brake disc and it'll wear out the pads aggressively and it's just not a good thing to do. And so it's actually a really easy fix. Just remove the uh, pivot bolt from the brake lever. It's really easy. It takes two 10 millimeter uh, wrenches. And then I just take just a little tiny bit of, of grease and lubricate the shoulder of the pivot bolt like that and slide it back in there. And then that does two things. It prevents water from getting in there to start with. And then if a little bit of water doesn't find its way in there, it can't uh, freeze because um, the grease lubricates the the bolt and the hole. So go ahead and tighten that up. There's three grease zerks on the rear suspension. And these should have been greased from the factory and your dealer should have um, checked that. Uh, 
And it looks like there's a little bit of grease on these Zerks, but I'm just gonna go ahead and put a shot of grease in there because I don't know what they did, if they put very much in or not. And this is a good thing to do periodically uh, throughout the winter because when you keep these uh, locations full of grease, then snow melt can't get in there and freeze up and, and cause problems with your suspension. The next thing I like to do when I'm uh, checking my sled out is just put a wrench on the uh, bolts that hold the suspension to the tunnel, the suspension mounting bolts. And what I'm checking for here is just to make sure they're good and tight. Uh, these are torqued and loctited from the factory. And they rarely come loose, but when they do, it's a very bad day. So there's two on each side. I'll just go ahead and check, check all of them. And then I want to do a visual while I'm, while I'm here. Just take a look at all of the bolts that hold the suspension parts together. Make sure they look tight. Uh, it's a really good idea to put a wrench on this rear axle bolt and make sure it's tight. I've seen those come loose before. So make sure you, uh, you check that. So I like to uh, check track deflection and alignment. And it's, a, uh, it's relatively easy to check. Um, as far as track deflection is concerned, we're talking about how, much, uh, uh, how hard it is to push the track away from the slide rail. And I have this handy little uh, deflection measuring tool. And what I want to do to, when I check my deflection is I'm going to adjust this indicator so that it's at one and a quarter inches. So I'll move that indicator right to the inch and a quarter mark. And then uh, this indicator reading uh, marker will be pushed all the way down to zero. And right here uh, at or near the uh, uh, bump stop, I'm going to lay that on the track and push on the top of the tool until the indicator is in line with the bottom of the rail, just like that. And then I can take it off and you can see it's moved my measuring uh, indicator part way up and I'm right between the 10 and 20 uh, foot pounds indicator. So I'm right on 15 foot pounds and uh, so that's how much tension I have at an inch and a quarter. Uh, the spec is 13 to 19 so I'm right in the middle. I'm right on spec. Uh, that's the proper adjustment. Now if you don't have one of these tools don't think uh, that you have to just run right down to the store and get one. It's kind of kind of cool. The, the thing of it is, is I want to run my track as loose as I can uh, so that I have a freer turning track. And <clears throat> so the reality is this is probably a little tighter than I would normally run my track, except that it's a brand new track and it's gonna stretch a little bit the fir after the first ride or two. So it's okay for me to go with it a little bit tight. What's gonna happen eventually is that uh, during the course of the first two or 300 miles, the track go is going to stretch and there's a possibility that it might ratchet or slip on the drive cogs. And so when that occurs, uh, I'm just, just going, going to go ahead and tighten uh, while I'm out, out on the mountain. I'll just tighten this adjuster. Uh, there's one on each side and I adjust them evenly um, so that I maintain my track alignment. Uh, and if I use this process rather than adjusting it with a tool in the shop, uh, it allows me to run the track as loose as I possibly can without having any slippage. Uh, and so I just, so effectively I'm trying to tighten it just enough so that it won't slip. As you get into heavier snow, perhaps in the spring uh, or more uh, coastal snow, coastal regions, 
Uh, typically, you have to run the track a little tighter than you would uh, in the winter snow conditions. And so we've identified now that the track tension is proper. Uh, the next thing is to uh, check track alignment. And to do that, I want to s rotate the track, and I'm going to start the engine and, and rotate the track. Uh, and so that it can uh, equalize because I've been dragging around on the floor and uh, one thing and another and it may not be centered on the rail uh, as it would after, after while I'm running it. So let me just go ahead and start it. And when I start this, I don't need to run the track 100 miles an hour. It's just, uh, I just need to rotate it a few times and then let it coast to a stop. I'm not gonna use the brake because if I grab the brake and stop the track rapidly, it might shift it sideways. And that's all you need, just a few revolutions. And then the idea is to check uh, the track clips uh, right here. And I've got about a quarter inch space between this track clip and the wear slider. And so I will compare that to the other side and it looks like I've got maybe only uh, an eighth of an inch on this side. So this side's just a little further away from the rail and I'll grab a 10 millimeter wrench. And because I have more gap on this side, I'm going to tighten this adjuster. And it, does, it doesn't take much, probably only a half a turn. We'll shift the track over to the other side. Something like that. Now there's no reason to loosen the axle bolt while you tighten this. If you, if you are making an adjustment that requires loosening it, so if I, uh, if I loosen the opposite side, I'm going to accomplish the same thing. Uh, but in, in, it, it just makes more sense to tighten this one just a little bit. I expect my track to stretch anyway because it's still new. And then I don't have to uh, tighten or loosen this uh, rear axle. So I've tightened that about a half a turn or so, and I'll just go ahead and start it again. And it looks to me like it's closed up. Just a little, I've got about 3 sixteenths of an inch. And also on this side, I've got 3 sixteenths of an inch. So we're, we're perfectly centered there. Uh, the track's running true with the rails. Uh, it's, it's tensioned a little tighter than I like, but since it's a new track, I expect it to stretch uh, pretty quickly. Uh, I'm, I'm ready for the snow. Okay, now that I have my track alignment uh, done and I'm satisfied with that, I'm gonna go ahead and start with my ski alignment process. Uh, and that process includes aligning the skis to the track. And so the way I accomplish that is I use a straight edge uh, that I lay along the edge of the track and I align the skis to the straight edge. Kobe's gonna bring the straight edge uh, and set it in place. Uh, basically, it's just a uh, couple pieces of couple pieces of rectangular tubing welded together, and the idea is that I need this uh, straight edge to be long enough to touch the track where it starts to turn up around the rear axles, and then it follows the track. And I've also got another contact point right here where the track goes up, starts to go up around the drivers. And of course, then the straight edge comes far enough forward uh, so that I can measure from the straight edge to the little uh, indicator arrow on my ski, both in front of the spindle and again, 
behind the spindle. These, these little indicator arrows are really difficult to see, probably on the camera, but uh, I can see them quite easily here. And so just so that you know that they're there, uh, I'll, this is where I measure. And, but before I take a dimension from there, I want to make sure that the handlebars are centered. And I've asked Kobe to uh, center the handlebars and hang on to them. And he's doing a really great job of that. So I'll go ahead and take this first measurement. And I'm measuring eight and five eighths from the inside edge of the straight edge to the inside of the uh, arrow. And I'll go to the rear, take the rear <coughs> measurement. And here I've got eight and a quarter. So this tells me that I'm towed out. I'll go ahead now and uh, loosen the jam nut on this uh, tie rod. And I want to lengthen it. So I'll turn it counterclockwise. And as I turn the ski, as I, as I make this adjustment, the ski is, is physically pivoting. I can see that. I know the handlebars are not turning because Kobe has uh, got a hold of them. If you're doing this alone, you're gonna you, you need to keep checking the handlebars and make sure they're not moving. So I'll take my measurement again. And I've got uh, about eight and seven sixteenths here and also eight and seven sixteenths here at that point. So this tells me that my ski is straight ahead. It's perfectly in alignment with the edge of the track. I'll go ahead and lock this jam nut. Okay, now at this point I know that the ski is, is in perfect alignment with the track, so I'll slide the uh, alignment bar out of the way. Uh, get that out of the way, and now uh, for the next to align this ski, uh, I'll just go ahead and measure from the indicator arrow on that ski to the indicator arrow on this ski. I've got 32 inches and 3 eighths. And when I check behind the spindle, I've got 32 inches and a about three sixteenths, so um, pretty close. I'm just, I'll just go ahead and give that a little adjustment. It's slightly towed out, so I'll bring that. I'll adjust this this front of the ski inward by lengthening the rod. Don't want to go too much on that one. Go ahead and recheck that adjustment. So I'm right at uh, 32 and 3 eighths. And 32 and 3 eighths. Okay, be sure to uh, lock that uh, jam nut and then uh, this process completes the uh, uh, aligning the first ski to the track and the second ski to the other ski. So now we have a perfectly aligned sled. So now it's time to uh, check the fluid levels. I'm going to start with the injection oil. I'll go ahead and open the side panel here. It's easy to just drop that side panel right off. And you can see this sled comes uh, with a nearly full uh, injection oil bottle, but we'll go ahead and top it off. I like to run my injection bottle full, so I'll top it off after each ride. And I like to fill this up right to the uh, bottom of the filler neck, so it's uh, good and full. Okay, we have the uh, injection oil bottle. We have also the uh, master cylinder brake reservoir uh, to check. And you can see that it's uh, it's topped right off. There's no reason to add any fluid to that. So next we have the uh, coolant level to check. 
And you can see the coolant level is uh, right here, so uh, there's no reason or need to add anything to the uh, coolant bottle. It's good to go. Uh, we will check the uh, chain case oil level. Just take an Allen wrench and back this uh, check level plug out. There's no oil running out it. So in order to uh, add oil, we'll just slide that uh, filler plug out. And I have some oil here. I'll just go ahead and insert enough oil until I see it starting to come out the uh, check level plug. Yep, there it comes. Just took about an ounce or so to bring that up to level. Go ahead and turn that plug back in. Just like that. Now, as long as we have the uh, uh, filler uh, plug out, I'm, I'll go ahead and check the chain tension. And I'm going to use my uh, little tool from the clutch cover, and if I'm very careful, I can just kind of reach in with the short end of the tool, reach in right underneath the uh, top sprocket, and I can feel the chain. And, and I can put a little pressure on that, and I can, I can feel that chain moving, okay? Uh, not very much. It's, I, I can tell that it's really tight. Um, there's no need for uh, adjusting that at this point, but after a few hundred miles, I'll probably need to snug that up. The adjuster's right here, and uh, it, uh, the Torx end of this adjusting tool fits right into it. And there's nothing, there's no jam nuts or anything to loosen. You can just go ahead and tighten it. If you need to tighten the chain, you screw it uh, in counter or clockwise and loosen it would be counterclockwise. Be careful not to over tension it because it'll uh, load the bearings and, and cause some uh, grief that way, some premature bearing failures. Uh, but the important thing is, is to check this periodically, at least every thousand miles. I like to check it right after break in and then about every thousand miles after that. So that covers my preseason uh, inspection. Uh, and I've kind of gone over the whole sled I feel like uh, I'm ready for my first ride. I'm really excited about that. I hope you guys are. Uh, pretty, pretty happy with this sled. I'm, uh, I'm just excited. It's that time of the year. And uh, if you have any questions at all on uh, anything that I've discussed, go ahead and uh, uh, message me on the comments and I'll get back to you.